in the heart of Thailand amidst bustling streets and vibrant night markets. I found myself standing before an ancient hostel. Drawn by the allure of its history and the whispers of its untouched beauty, I decided it would be my home for the duration of my stay. Traveling had always been my escape, a way to immerse myself in cultures far removed from my own, and this time was no different. Or so I thought. The hostel, nestled in an older part of the city, promised an authentic experience, a dive into the true spirit of Thailand away from the usual tourist traps. Little did I know, my quest for authenticity would lead me down a path far darker than I could have imagined. The sun was setting as I arrived at the hostel. Its facade, a blend of traditional Thai architecture and the wear of time, stood as a silent sentinel in the fading light. The heavy wooden doors opened with a creak that echoed through the empty lobby, sending a shiver down my spine. I should have taken it as a sign, a forewarning of what was to come, but the exhaustion from my travels clouded my judgment. The interior was a time capsule with antique furniture and faded photographs adorning the walls. It was as if the hostel was clinging to its past, unwilling to let go of the stories it held within its aged walls. The air was thick with a musty smell, the kind that speaks of closed spaces and years gone by. The receptionist, a frail old man with a warm smile, greeted me in broken English. His hands trembled as he handed me the key to my room, his eyes briefly flickering with what I now understand was a shadow of concern. My room was on the second floor at the end of a long, dimly lit hallway. The floorboards groaned under my weight, each step echoing ominously. The door to my room was slightly ajar, which struck me as odd, but the thought was quickly dismissed as I pushed it open and stepped inside. The room was modest, furnished with a simple bed, a wooden chair, and a small table. A single bare bulb hung from the ceiling, casting shadows that danced along the walls. I unpacked my belongings and decided to explore the hostel. The building seemed to twist and turn in ways that defied its exterior dimensions. Corridors branched off in unexpected directions some leading to dead ends where the faintest whispers seemed to linger in the air. I stumbled upon a small courtyard in the heart of the hostel, an oasis of calm with a solitary banyan tree standing in the center. Its roots were entwined around a small, crumbling statue of a deity I couldn't recognize, giving the scene an eerie sense of permanence. As night fell, a palpable sense of unease settled over the hostel, the vibrant noises of the city seemed to fade away, leaving behind a silence that was almost suffocating. I tried to convince myself it was just the jet lag, the unfamiliarity of being in a new place. But the feeling of being watched was impossible to shake off. I retired to my room early, hoping sleep would provide a respite from the growing sense of dread. However, sleep proved elusive. The room felt colder, the shadows deeper, and the silence was broken by the sound of footsteps in the hallway. I told myself it was just another guest, but the steps were too slow, too deliberate, and they stopped right outside my door. I lay there holding my breath, waiting for a knock that never came. Instead, the footsteps receded, fading into the distance until all that was left was the pounding of my heart. That night, I dreamt of the banyan tree in the courtyard. Its branches reached out to me, entwining around my limbs, pulling me towards the crumbling statue. The deity's face was no longer indistinct. It was a mask of horror, its eyes hollow pits that seemed to pierce my soul. I woke in a cold sweat, the afterimage of the dream burned into my vision. The next morning I tried to shake off the remnants of the night. The hostel, bathed in sunlight, seemed less menacing, its dark corners and whispered secrets momentarily forgotten. I decided to spend the day exploring the city, 
immersing myself in its vibrant culture and bustling streets in an attempt to dispel the shadows of the night. But as the day wore on, the sense of unease grew, a constant companion that whispered of unseen eyes and hidden malice. The city's brightness could not penetrate the darkness that had taken root within me, a darkness that was tied to the hostel and its ancient walls. I returned that evening with a heavy heart, the setting sun casting long shadows that seemed to reach out towards me. The hostel's facade, once merely aged, now seemed sinister, as if it harbored secrets it was unwilling to share. My steps were heavy as I made my way back to my room, the events of the previous night playing over in my mind. I could not have known then that my return would mark the beginning of a descent into a nightmare, a journey into the heart of darkness that lay waiting within the ancient walls of the hostel. The first night had been but a prelude, a gentle introduction to the horror that was to unfold. The night welcomed me back with a silence that felt like a weight upon my chest. The lobby was deserted, the receptionist nowhere to be seen, and the only light came from a flickering lamp that cast more shadows than it dispelled. As I made my way up the creaking stairs to my room, the sense of foreboding that I had tried to ignore during the day returned with a vengeance. It was as if the hostel itself was alive, watching me with unseen eyes, its breath a whisper in the dark. Once inside my room, the door shut behind me with a finality that made my heart skip a beat. The air felt colder, charged with an unseen energy that raised the hairs on the back of my neck. I tried to convince myself that it was just the building settling the natural sounds of an old structure. But deep down, I knew it was something more, something otherworldly. I lay in bed, the covers pulled tight around me, my eyes fixed on the door, half expecting it to burst open at any moment. But it wasn't the door that shattered the oppressive silence. It was the walls themselves. They began to whisper. At first, I thought I was imagining it, a trick of the mind brought on by fear and exhaustion. But as I strained to listen, the whispers grew louder, more insistent. They were voices, countless voices, speaking in a language I couldn't understand. They seemed to be calling out, reaching for something or someone. I realized, with a mounting sense of horror, that they were reaching for me. I wanted to flee, to run from the room and never look back, but I was paralyzed, trapped in a web of fear. The voices grew louder still, until they were all I could hear, a cacophony of despair that filled the room and my mind. And then, as suddenly as they had begun, they stopped. The silence that followed was even more terrifying, a void where the whispers still echoed. I spent the night in a state of vigilance, jumping at every creak and groan of the hostel. Dawn couldn't come soon enough, and when it finally did, the light felt like a salvation, a reprieve from the darkness and the voices that had tormented me through the night. Exhausted and shaken, I resolved to seek answers. After a restless morning wandering the city, Trying and failing to distract myself from the memories of the night before, I returned to the hostel. I needed to know if anyone else had experienced what I had, if the whispers were known to the staff or other guests. The old receptionist was back at his post, his smile as warm as ever, but his eyes betrayed a hint of sadness when I approached him. I asked him about the whispers, about the voices in the walls. For a moment, I thought he would dismiss my questions, but instead, he sighed, a weight seeming to lift from his shoulders as he began to speak. He told me of the hostel's dark past, of a time when it was not a place of rest, but of suffering. 
the building had once been a site of great tragedy, a place where lives were lost and souls were trapped, unable to move on. The whispers, he said, were the voices of those souls reaching out in their eternal torment. I listened, a sense of dread growing with every word. The hostel's history was a tapestry of sorrow, each thread a story of loss and despair. The receptionist spoke of his own experiences, of nights filled with the sounds of the unseen, of his acceptance of the hostel's haunted nature as a part of its charm. But for me, there was no charm in the whispers, no beauty in the haunting. There was only fear and a growing realization that I was caught in something far beyond my understanding. The receptionist's story had provided some answers, but it had also raised new questions, questions that gnawed at the edges of my mind. As I left the lobby, the old man's words echoed in my head, a warning or perhaps a prophecy. Some doors, once opened, cannot be closed again. I couldn't shake the feeling that by acknowledging the whispers, by seeking out their source, I had opened a door that would lead me further into the darkness. That night, as I lay in bed, the whispers returned. But this time, they were not alone. There was something else with them, something in the shadows, watching, waiting. The hostel, with its ancient walls and hidden secrets, had accepted me as a guest. But I was beginning to fear that it had no intention of letting me leave. As the whispers encircled me once more, a chilling realization dawned upon me. The hostel was not merely a passive keeper of the past. It was an active participant in the horrors that lurked within its walls. The voices, now a familiar yet no less terrifying presence, seemed almost to guide me, urging me down a path I was hesitant to follow. Yet, compelled by a mixture of fear and an insatiable need for answers, I found myself drawn into the depths of the building's dark history. The day was spent in a haze of apprehension, the sunlight doing little to dispel the shadows that now seemed to cling to my very soul. As evening approached, the hostel transformed once again into a labyrinth of fear, its corridors and rooms alive with the echoes of its tormented past. It was then that I decided to confront the source of my terror, to seek out the heart of the darkness that had enveloped me since my arrival. Armed with nothing but a flashlight and a desperate hope for understanding, I ventured beyond the confines of my room, following the whispers as they weaved through the hostel's halls. The air grew colder with each step, the darkness deeper, as if I was moving further away from the world of the living and closer to the realm of the damned. It wasn't long before I realized that the whispers were leading me to the courtyard, to the ancient Banyan tree that stood as a sentinel over the hostel's hidden secrets. The statue beneath the tree, once an indistinct figure in my dreams, now seemed to beckon to me, its features illuminated by the moonlight in a grotesque parody of welcome. As I approached, the whispers grew to a fever pitch, the voices no longer indistinguishable, but clear, each one a distinct cry of pain and anger. They surrounded me, a vortex of despair that threatened to overwhelm my senses. But it was the presence I felt within the shadows that truly terrified me. It was an entity of pure malice, a darkness that the whispers seemed to both fear and worship. I stood before the statue, the source of the hostel's haunting, and confronted the unseen presence. I demanded to know why it tormented me, what it wanted from me. The air around me grew thick with tension, the silence absolute, as if the world itself was holding its breath. And then it answered. Not with words, but with visions that flooded my mind, images of the hostel's past, of the tragedy that had occurred within its walls. I saw faces twisted in agony, 
lives cut short by violence and despair. The hostel had been a place of suffering, its walls witness to atrocities that had left an indelible mark upon the fabric of reality itself. The presence, I realized, was not just a single entity, but the collective anguish of all those who had suffered there, bound to the hostel by chains of grief and rage. It had existed in silence, unseen and unheard, until my arrival had somehow awakened it, given it a voice through the whispers. As the visions faded, leaving me gasping for breath on the cold ground, the realization hit me with the force of a physical blow. The hostel did not intend to harm me. Instead, it sought to make me understand, to bear witness to the pain that had been hidden within its walls for so long. The whispers, the presence, all of it was a desperate plea for acknowledgement, for the stories of the past to be heard and remembered. Exhausted and shaken to my core, I retreated to my room, the weight of the hostel's sorrow heavy upon my shoulders. I knew then that I could not leave, not yet. There was still a part to play in this tragedy, a role that I had unwittingly assumed upon crossing the threshold of the hostel. That night, I slept not out of exhaustion, but out of necessity, a brief respite to gather the strength needed for what was to come. For I had decided to delve deeper into the hostel's past, to uncover the full extent of the tragedy that had occurred, and, if possible, to find a way to ease the suffering that lingered like an open wound. The next morning dawned clear and bright, a stark contrast to the darkness that had enveloped me since my arrival. With a renewed sense of purpose, I set out to uncover the secrets of the hostel, to give voice to the whispers that had haunted me, and to confront the unseen presence that had shown me the true heart of the darkness within. The dawn's light brought a fragile courage, a resolve to pierce the shadows that had suffocated me since my arrival. The hostel under the gaze of the morning sun seemed momentarily ordinary, its horrors tucked away in the crevices of the night. Yet, the illusion of normalcy did little to ease the weight of my task. I was to dive into the depths of its past, to unearth the truths buried beneath layers of silence and fear. My investigation began in the most mundane of places, the local library. The whispers had led me to understand, but comprehension required knowledge, facts that could anchor the ghostly visions to reality. The town's history, as it turned out, was closely intertwined with that of the hostel, its origins dating back to a time when it served a purpose far removed from hospitality. Piecing together old newspaper clippings, personal diaries and police reports, a chilling narrative began to emerge. The hostel, originally a grand family home, had been the site of a tragic fire in the early 1900s, one that claimed the lives of the entire household. In the decades that followed, the building changed hands numerous times, each owner seemingly eager to rid themselves of it, until it was eventually transformed into the hostel where I now stayed. But the fire was only the beginning of the tale, the hostel had seen its share of sorrow and darkness beyond the initial tragedy. Disappearances, unexplained incidents and tales of madness that seemed to cling to the building like a curse. The more I learned, the more the hostel's malevolent presence made sense. It was not merely a ghost, but a nexus of suffering, a focal point for decades of pain and misery. Armed with this knowledge, I returned to the hostel with a new perspective. The walls, the floors, even the air I breathed seemed saturated with the echoes of the past. The entity, the collective anguish of all those lost souls, wasn't trying to drive me away. It was seeking release, a voice to echo its pain in the realm of the living. Determined to find a way to help, I sought out the old receptionist once more. This time my questions were more pointed seeking not just the history of the hostel, 
but any knowledge of rituals or practices that might appease the restless spirits. The old man's eyes, when he heard my tale, held a mixture of sadness and relief. It was as if he had been waiting for someone to come along, someone willing to confront the hostel's dark legacy head on. He spoke of an old ritual, one rooted in local tradition, meant to guide lost souls towards peace. It required a deep understanding and acceptance of the suffering endured by those spirits, as well as a sincere desire to help them find their way. It was a dangerous path, he warned, one that could tether me even more closely to the hostel's dark energy. But the choice in the end was simple. If there was even a chance I could help, I had to take it. That night, under a moon that seemed to shine with an ethereal light just for us, we prepared the ritual in the courtyard beneath the banyan tree. The old receptionist, acting as a guide and mediator, directed me through the ancient steps, each one a testament to the respect and reverence owed to those who had passed. We called out to the spirits, acknowledging their pain, offering empathy and understanding as a balm for their eternal wounds. As the ritual reached its climax, the air around us grew thick, the darkness palpable. The whispers returned, not as a cacophony of despair, but as individual voices, each one expressing their sorrows, their regrets, and finally, their thanks. The presence, the entity that had seemed so menacing, now radiated a profound sadness, a longing for release that was almost tangible. And then, as if a storm had passed, a sense of peace settled over the courtyard. The whispers faded, the oppressive atmosphere lifted, and for the first time since my arrival, the hostel felt truly silent. The entity, the collective soul of the hostel's tragic past, had found a semblance of peace, its pain acknowledged, its story heard. Exhausted but elated, I collapsed into sleep, the first peaceful rest I had experienced in what felt like an eternity. The next morning, the hostel seemed transformed. The shadows that had once seemed menacing now played innocently in the sunlight, and the air felt lighter, freed from the weight of centuries of sorrow. Yet I knew my time at the hostel was drawing to a close. The ritual had brought peace, but it was a fragile thing, one that required care and respect to maintain. My role in the hostel's story was ending, but another was just beginning, a role that would require me to carry the memory of what I had experienced, to ensure that the suffering endured within those walls was never forgotten. As the dawn broke on what would be my final day within the walls of the ancient hostel, I awoke with a sense of clarity and purpose. The oppressive dread that had shadowed my every step since my arrival had lifted, replaced by a serene calmness. The ritual in the courtyard under the banyan tree, a nexus of so much pain and suffering, had served as a conduit for healing not just for the tormented souls trapped within the hostel, but for myself as well. The hostel, once a prison of anguish and despair, now stood as a monument to the resilience of the human spirit, a testament to the power of acknowledgement and empathy. As I packed my belongings, the building seemed to whisper its thanks, the walls echoing with the faintest traces of the voices that had once filled them with terror. They were quiet now, at peace, their stories finally told. Before I left, I sought out the old receptionist, the guardian of the hostel's dark secrets, and now a fellow architect of its redemption. He greeted me with a knowing smile, a look that spoke volumes of the journey we had undertaken together. In his hands, he held a small token a piece of the ancient banyan tree carved into a simple amulet. He pressed it into my hand, a symbol of the bond between me and the hostel, a reminder of the light that can be found even in the darkest of places. 
As I stepped out of the hostel, the sun high in the sky, I turned back for one last look. The building, with its faded facade and ancient roots, no longer seemed menacing or foreboding. Instead, it stood proud, a beacon of hope, and a reminder of the unseen battles fought and won within its walls. The streets of Thailand, vibrant and bustling with life, welcomed me back. But I was no longer the same person who had arrived at the hostel days before. I had come seeking adventure, a temporary escape from the monotony of everyday life. What I found was a profound connection to the past, an understanding of the deep, often unseen scars that history can leave behind. The amulet from the old receptionist hung around my neck, a constant companion and a tangible link to the experiences that had changed me. It served as a reminder that every place, no matter how dark or troubled, has a story to be told, and that sometimes the act of listening can be the most powerful form of healing. As my journey continued, the lessons learned within the walls of the haunted hostel stayed with me. The voices that had once filled me with terror now whispered words of wisdom, guiding me towards a deeper understanding of the world and my place within it. They taught me that the shadows of the past need not define us, that redemption is possible, and that peace can be found in the most unexpected of places. The haunted hostel of Thailand became a chapter in my story, a pivotal moment that shaped my path in ways I could never have anticipated. It taught me that true adventure lies not in the places we visit, but in the experiences we open ourselves to, the connections we make, and the stories we help to tell. And so, as I moved forward, carrying the memories and lessons of the hostel with me, I did so with a newfound respect for the unseen forces that shape our world. The whispers may have faded, but their message remained clear. In the heart of darkness, there is light to be found. If only we are brave enough to seek it out. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and please subscribe. Your support will help us tremendously. Thank you.